Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. Well, you guys know I usually do critiques of like, you know, celebrities and, and doctors on television. I love bananas. <laughs> I wish I thought it was healthy to eat 10, 20 of them a day because I love them. And in major media magazines that have you know, really bad information about vegan diets. Well, today I'm going to focus on something a little bit differently. I'm going to focus on a friend's blog. He's a friend of a friend, basically. Started dating one of our good buddies here in Long Beach and has since then taken her away, away from Long Beach. But anyway, I know he's really big into meat and butter coffee and all that you know, low-carb paleo stuff. And that doesn't bother me. I know pl plenty of people that do that and I don't give them any crap, but he recently made a blog post on his blog, which really got me annoyed. Just look at this title here, The Dangers and Ignorance of Veganism. And what's worse than that title is this blog post is just filled with completely incorrect information. You got almost everything wrong here. So if you're going to make a post like that attacking my diet and lifestyle, I need to respond. Well, you begin your blog post by saying that veganism is found nowhere else in nature. Well, first of all, I need to point out that's an appeal to nature logical fallacy. You're basically trying to say just because something's found in nature, that makes it right or okay, or the converse of that. Something's not found in nature, that makes it wrong or bad. And logical fallacies aside, your claim is just simply untrue. Some of the largest, most powerful animals on the planet, such as elephants and rhinos, eat only plants. An argument that he gives here that many other meat eaters give when they're trying to refute vegans is that plants have feelings too. How do your plants feel when they're being ground to death in your omega juicer? Well, first of all, when I take a mango or banana and grind it up in my juicer, the mango tree or the banana tree is still alive, so no one's being killed when I make a smoothie or juice. But plants just simply don't have feelings. They do not have brains. They don't have a central nervous system. Plants don't experience anger and embarrassment and joy. Plants do have consciousness, though, a kind of plant consciousness, a kind of reaction to sunlight, being able to pull nutrients out of the soil. Plants are able to do the business of being a plant perfectly through their plant consciousness. But to take it from there that they have consciousness like a being like us or a cow that has a central nervous system and a brain is just patently false. All right, this next one really gives me one classic feature of veganism is protein deficiency. A feature of veganism? Are you effing serious? Have you ever met a person, vegan or otherwise, deficient in protein? I should have by now, right? I've been vegan for six years. I know tons of vegans. I've yet to meet a single vegan deficient in protein. It's just a myth. I know where this is coming from. Most average people that don't know much about veganism walk around with this mistaken myth belief in their head that you need animal sources to, to get protein in your diet. And that's just patently false. Most people don't realize that all plant foods have protein. They have the essential amino acids that we need to be healthy. In fact, I've been getting my blood tested the entire time I've been vegan. Three tests now over the six plus years. And I'll show you my latest result here. Is it always is? It's always right smack dab in the middle of the healthy range. And Nick provides this big list of problems that vegans are more likely than meat eaters to experience. A whole host of maladies ranging from depression to all sorts of nutritional deficiencies like protein deficiency, which I just covered. I covered some of these issues actually before, like say for instance depression. Here's what I said when I rebutted what Cosmo magazine said about vegans and depression. Next is depression. Vegetarians are depressed people. So they say, they cite one study which found that vegetarians were a little bit more likely to be depressed than meat eaters. The study didn't appear to examine if it was caused by vegetarianism, just that they happen to be. And there's a lot of reasons for that, possibly. I mean, think about it. You know, you're, you're going against the grain of society. You have to deal with stupid comments from people in your everyday life and on your YouTube channel, if you have one, on a daily basis. <laughs> And he says that us vegans should be deficient in minerals like zinc and iron. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense because seven out of the 10 top sources of zinc come from plants. And for iron, your number one source is pumpkin seeds. And again, seven out of the 10 top sources of iron are plants. 
And of course, he brought up vegans are deficient in B12. Again, let me show you what I said in my video response to Cosmo magazine. So I guess if you eat meat, you're going to have great B12 levels, right? No, not at all. A study of 3,000 otherwise healthy individuals found that 39% of them had B12 levels of low, normal, or worse, levels below 260. And again, anecdotally, my last blood test, 698. So take that. I'd like to point out that Nick is not linking to any studies, any science proving his claims other than some vague quotes to the Weston A. Price Foundation, who we know is just a pro-meat lobby, not a scientific organization, peer-reviewed, none of that. Anyway, he goes on to say here that vegans simply cannot stay healthy. Hmm, I've been pretty freaking healthy for the past six years as a vegan. My blood tests prove it, but that's just me. What does science say? Who lives the longest in this world? Since the one population that lives even longer than the Okinawa Japanese, don't just eat a 98% meat-free diet, they eat 100% meat-free. The Adventist vegetarians in California, with perhaps the highest life expectancy of any formerly described population. And Nick goes on to end his blog post by saying, if someone happens to get really healthy as a vegan, it's just a short-term thing. Again, where is your science for that bra? Where do you get that vegans can only be healthy for, what, a few months, maybe a year? What is short-term for you? Try six and a half years, which I've been vegan for that long. I am the healthiest I've ever been now, as evidenced by my blood test work, which is flawless. And I'm athletic. I'm fit. I run. I, I play basketball. I ride bike. Bikes, I surf, I skateboard. I'm almost 49 years old, so, and I also want to mention, I take absolutely no stimulants. I know you're into that David Asprey butter coffee, so you're, you know, kind of jacked up on caffeine. I get all my energy from living a happy, healthy, vegan diet and lifestyle. So Nick, in case you're watching this video, I want you to know I'm not making this video out of hate. I have no problem with you. I'm making this video to educate. Unfortunately, you've acquired some of these, you know, popular, trendy, low-carb, paleo myths that are just untrue, as I've shown here in this video, and there's plenty of science to back this up. Veganism is far from an unhealthy diet. The longest lived people on this planet eat absolutely no meat whatsoever, the Seventh Day Adventists, and the top leading causes of death here in the West. We're talking about heart attack, diabetes, stroke, the most common forms of cancer are all attributable to eating animal products. So post your questions and comments down below. What's your experiences, if any, with low-carb, paleo-style diets? And keep it rational. Let's not bag on Nick here. I told you he's a cool guy. I'm just trying to help and educate here. If you want to really get the point across, don't be jerks to him, all right? If you got some of this video, hit like and um, share it with a friend who's into low-carb, paleo-type stuff. And subscribe if you're new to our channel for more from me and Angie here at Happy Healthy Vegan. So until next time, guys, keep it carb, baby. High carbs, low fat. Big shout outs to our latest supporters on Patreon.com. Michelle and Corey, thank you so much. Really deeply appreciate your contributions to us. It really helps keep our show alive here and helping us reach our goal of just simply breaking even here with Happy Healthy Vegan. So yeah, we're getting there. We're getting close. Thanks to you guys.